ప్రియం సార్ ఆ భాషా సార్కి చెప్పా మాది ఆ జూమ్ లో ఉన్నాయి
విరామ్ సార్ మ్యూట్ లో ఉన్నారు పాతిమా మేడం వీడియో అంటారా మేడం భాష నా వాయిస్ వస్తుందా క్లియర్ వస్తుంది సార్ మీ వాయిస్ మీరు ఆడియో క్లియర్ వస్తుంది సార్ మేడం క్లియర్ చేయాలా మేడం కృష్ణారెడ్డి సార్ ఒకసారి మ్యూట్ అన్మ్యూట్ చేయరా మీ వాయిస్ సో నమస్కారం సార్ వినపడుతుందా నమస్తే సార్ క్లియర్ క్లియర్ గా సార్ నమస్తే మేడం అందరికి నమస్తే నమస్తే సార్ నమస్తే ఎలా ఉంది సార్ మీకు ఆరోగ్యం ఇప్పుడు ఆ ఫైన్ మేడం బెటర్ నౌ ఓకే చాలా థాంక్స్ సార్ మీరు ఇంత ఫాస్ట్ గా మీరు మళ్ళీ మాకు టైం ఇయ్యగలిగారు చాలా చాలా థాంక్స్ ఆ వెల్కమ్ థాంక్యూ మేడం ఇట్స్ మై ప్లెజర్ అది కూడా అనుకోకుండా అయ్యింది ఐ వాస్ బికాజ్ లెపోస్కోపి కాబట్టి తొందరగా రికవర్ అయిపోయాను మామూలుగా నార్మల్ సర్జరీ అయితే కొంత టైం పట్టేదేమో ఇప్పుడు కూడా నేను ఐ థింక్ ఫస్ట్ లెక్చర్ సర్జరీ తర్వాత శ్రీరామ్ వాజ్ పుషింగ్ మీ ఆల్ ద టైమ్ సో ఐ కుడ్ నాట్ సే నో టు హిమ్ సో ఎంట్రీ ప్రాబ్లం Uh, let me try to share the screen is it possible sir try it sir yes, sir, sir. Yeah. hope it is visible right yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. Yes. okay, okay. ఉన్నారు <laughs> ఇప్పుడైతే మొత్తం గ్రూప్ లోనే ఫైవ్ ఫోర్ ఫోటోస్ తీసినా సార్ స్క్రీన్ షాట్ తీసిన ఫోటో సింగిల్ గా కావాలంటే మనం అందరం తీసుకుంటారా సార్
टू मिनट्स तो स्टार्ट करिए भाषा हाँ जैसा सर राइट पाशा स्टार्ट ओके स्टार्ट जेंट्स यस पाठ में पाठ में स्टार्ट करते हैं Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Clearly. Yes, you are audible. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Very good morning to one and all. Myself, Fatima B, Assistant Professor of Commerce, extend a warm welcome to all the participants on behalf of Vidruka College of Commerce and Arts. In this pandemic situation, there is a drastic change in the complete economy of the world, including India, and hence it has become the need of the hour. to analyze the monetary policy existing in our country and how it is going to affect different sectors and sections of our country to enlighten us in this regard we have with us a renowned person in economics as our speaker for today's yeah. webinar krishna reddy mm -hmm. assistant professor school of economics yes, city of hyderabad we thank you sir for accepting our invitation Now, Miss Anupama, ma'am, Vice Principal, to kindly take over. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Fatima. A very warm and pleasant oh, morning yeah, yeah, to our distinguished speaker, Dr. Krishna Reddy Chitradi, faculty members, students, and esteemed participants. Oh. I welcome oh. you all to the national webinar on analysis of the impact of monetary policy mm -hmm. during the oh. pandemic in India. I might likewise want to offer my okay, thanks okay. to our speaker, okay, okay. Dr. So, I mean, Krishna Reddy, Assistant Professor, School I mean, of Economics, Anna, University Anna, of Anna, Hyderabad, who has acknowledged our invitation Anna, and invited us. We are grateful to you, sir, for honoring our invitation, and also got to know that you were hospitalized, but you were resilient enough despite your sickness to grace the occasion as a resource person. Thank you once again, sir. Before we move ahead, in a nutshell, let me share the history of Bhadrika College with all of you. Our college was founded in 1950 by a philanthropist, Raja Bankat Lal Bhadrika. He rendered selfless services to society and also cherished a vision to reach out to the students to mold their lives through education, thus giving birth 
to the prestigious institution, Badruka College of Commerce and Arts. It is a matter of great honor that our college has completed seven decades and we have been serving the cause of higher education with dedication in the field of commerce. We take pride in saying that ours is the first commerce college to be affiliated to Usmania University. We have excellent teachers who support the students in reaching their potential. Over the years, the college achieved significant growth in student strength and an increase in the range of courses offered. Today, the name Badruka has become synonymous with commerce education. Every year, our students add feathers to our cap by securing university ranks. And our alumni shine as luminaries spread across the globe in all walks of life. Our strength is our students. And we leave no leaf unturned to instill good qualities, to strengthen them for the future and mold into responsible citizens. Coming to today's webinar, we are all aware that the economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. Today, we have made an attempt to study and understand the impact of monetary policy during the pandemic in India through our eminent speaker of the day, Dr. Krishna Reddy Chitradi. We hope that his immense expertise on subject matter will enlighten all of us. So looking forward to having a great and informative session ahead. Thank you everyone. And once again, welcome you all to the webinar. Over to you, Fatima, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring words. Proceeding further, now I request Mr. Sriram Sir, Assistant Professor of Commerce and Convener for the webinar to introduce the speaker to all of us. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Fatima, ma'am. <coughs> Am I audible? So, very good morning, one and all. I am Zaira, Associate Professor of Commerce at Badruga College of Commerce and Arts. I deem it as the utmost privilege to be the convener of this webinar on analysis of the impact of monetary policy during pandemic in India, hosted by BCCA. It's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Krishna Reddy Chitadi, Assistant Professor, School of Economics, University of Hyderabad, Telangana. Dr. Krishna Reddy Chitadi has been awarded Professor M.J. Manohar Rao Peng Economist Award for the year 2015 from the Indian Economic Society, New Delhi. Dr. Reddy also received Professor K. N. Raj Teacher Fellowship in the year 2016 from Center for Development Study, Vendram, India. Dr. Reddy has published several research papers in leading journals, Energy, LCO, Renewable Energy, LCO, Management of Environmental Quality, and Internal Journal, MRL, International Journal of Finance and Economics, etc and in national and international conferences proceedings and two books in his credit. Dr. Reddy is currently a reviewer of more than 20 research journals and is serving as editorial board member for the five international journals. He is also a popular writer in leading Telugu newspapers, Inadu, Sakshi, etc. Actively participate in discussions and debates in TV channels like in uh, ETV, TV, T News, Do Version, V6, so on on contemporary issues. Under guidance of Dr. Reddy, two PhDs and one, PhD, one MPhil is awarded. He is also extending services as a subject expert for various public service commissions in India. His research papers have more than 425 citations. Dr. Reddy delivered more than 75 invited lectures across the country. So I welcome you, sir. Thanks for accepting our uh, request to be a speaker for the webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sriram, for the generous uh, you know, introduction, as well as, you know, having me here today for this, uh, you know, for a webinar. Uh, firstly, I take this opportunity to, uh, you know, thank Badruka College, uh, you know, for, you know, continuously, you know, dismantling the, you know, knowledge to the people, even despite this uh, COVID difficulties by organizing various lectures, as rightly, uh, you know, uh, said by our Vice Principal, Madam Anupama, Madam, 
uh, you know this Badruka College as from student days I heard a lot about from this college and continue to hear you know I think it's one of the pioneer institute uh, you know in the country uh, you know it has produced many stalwarts in the field of commerce you know particularly so in that way uh, you know it's a great privilege for me to be part of uh, you know as a uh, the webinar uh, for this study uh, program so thank you fatima madam and uh, anubhav madam for you know uh, for uh, you know facilitating this uh, webinar and also thanks all the audience despite this pandemic situation everybody is uh, you know worried and you know had psychological pressure but still i would uh, happy to see that still there are many people who want to learn and understand the system how it uh, you know works all right so uh, with that uh, brief uh, note uh, let me start without much delay so what i'll do is try to as uh, brief as possible then we can have also detailed discussion i don't know how brief i can be but yes let me try if i can so uh, what i the idea is today uh, like we all know that the country is not only in experiencing the human loss uh, we very clear there are two big losses one is the economy side other is the human side because the many people are you know the lost the lives and many people are hospitalized and lot of debts you know they are having psychologically you know there is lot of pressure in the society not only just in india across the world so this sort of crisis maybe once in generation uh, we could see maybe in the swine flu in the 1916 or 17 during that time we had a big you know disaster the human disaster i mean this disaster was happened i think now it is again we are experiencing uh, another sort of things so this loss is in many comes it's not about just in human also in economy or in in terms of various ways it is an impacting across the world so today our lecture is trying to understand again as uh, you know we all know that uh, we try to focus on the economy aspect and understand that what government is particularly doing particularly uh, on the rbi front see we all know the fiscal policy where the government of india will take care the fiscal policy is about the government expenditure and the revenue right so how much you know they uh, pump the money into the economy through various schemes which we'll try to discuss at the Uh, you know, end of the session, like you know, there is something like you know, helicopter money and all, so that who can distribute, whether the government or the the central bank, how it can be done. So, but basically, the physical policy is all about the the uh, changing the or spending of the government. Whereas this monetary policy, it is uh, solely the responsibility of the Reserve Bank of India, right? So, I'm, I'm sure we all know that the conduct of monetary policy. is the responsibility of the rbi for our country this is a central bank so what i i will be doing is i understand that the the audience particularly the participants are across the streams uh, uh, some of them may be with economics background some of them may be few you know pure commerce and management so i'll try to introduce you the various instruments of the rbi then we'll look at what sort of measures has rbi adopted and how effect to that and what could be done as a institution of an rbi so what role it is playing in these duris i mean the difficult times for the economy so that is a core idea of today our uh, you know the discussion of this presentation so as uh, i'm sure we all know how the basic circular flow of this is a very simpler uh, circular flow of income where from the household to the industry to the, the government to the even if there is an open economy an international market so to just to understand how economy channelizes the funds and the resources to a different sectors so in a way it is interdependent every sector is dependent on the other sector so that's the reason we say that's a, a circular flow of the economy like as i mentioned just to try to understand that what a monetary policy will do and what a physical policy has to be done so uh, without going into the detail basically the monetary policy is try to uh, rectify or to adjust the monetary policy in the economy through the interest rates so that is basically it's wanted to achieve the price stability so that uh, you know economy would move on into the positive rate so that price stability with the growth objectives right so that is the uh, the precise 
and uh, the central bank which is uh, the major uh, uh, the concern but as the fiscal policy as i mentioned the government takes care of how it has to be spent and how it will you know go on like even internationally what is the our exchange rate and how we can you know continue because if you look at also how our forex reserves we are maintaining so because the indian growth trajectory is also uh, we are experiencing very positive post 1991 after the liberalization of our economy right of course it has own pros and cons after this 1990 liberalization but precisely the growth or the trade the volumes has increased the post 1990 so all these matters of concern with the fiscal policy where the elected governments will take care and will try to adjust to uh, provide the employment to provide the social welfare schemes to protect the you know the living standard or all that from the government's uh, sides like we have seen already you know the pds uh, through the public distribution system government of india in the way first wave it has distributed certain amount of you uh, know goods uh, to the all the bpl uh, family or particularly the ration card holders across the country uh, certainly the state governments also added uh, to that and some amount of the money is also as central government has contributed and some part of the money even state governments also has added to help the poor of the you know poorer section of the society during this pandemic times uh, you know in the first wave and the second wave the packages that are in the pipeline i think you may uh, see in the coming days if the this covid is persistent at the long term so that's the idea about the uh, the government side which very briefly i've touched upon what it has done uh, as the fiscal policy is concerned so now the rbi as we are focus of the discussion is on the rbi so then what is the rbi preamble says that what is the, the core and objective of uh, this if you see as we all know it is the issue of bank notes and securing the monetary stability okay so at the end of the day with is a in a simple one line if you have to see that maintaining the price stability with keeping in mind of the objective of growth which i already discussed so this is the basic preamble of an rbi i'm sure many of you are familiar with what are the major functions of the rbi but very quick i'll go through for the benefit of the students who are not much familiarized that is the this is the apex body for the uh, you know for the mo- uh, conduct of monetary policy which also formulates and implements the you know the policy and this is also a regulator and supervisor of the financial system and also the manager of the foreign exchange that means if any country has to be uh, you know uh, i mean you have to hold more forex reserves or how do we manage and how do we uh, devalue or uh, you know you uh, try to uh, you know make the currency more better. so all that uh, you know uh, it's a matter of uh, 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 under control of the rbi the management of the forex like if you see even the cryptocurrencies today which has most become a popular which is also having lot of issues and concerns but even rbi is trying to advise as of now it has banned and again he said there is an advisory notes on various in issues so entirely basically it is looks after the money supply and the all that so issuance of the currency and you know developmental role as you know it performs some of the uh, you know to support the national objectives like as i said today the government of india along you in, in addition to the government of india measures the rbi is also coming forward to you know save the different uh, you know kind of people uh, from this covid by uh, ad- adopting or ad- you know uh, having uh, different policies and this will be the banker to the bank so another important aspect of the rbi particularly you might have heard in the past sometime back that rbi become uh the lost the autonomy uh, because the several of the previous rpa governors has mentioned that uh, you know they were pressurized and they put force on them for some reason of some allegations after the stepped out from the uh, their you know uh, uh, post they have also made certain allegations so without going into the detail what i would try to look you know make and my observation is that if there is an any sort of pressure from the government if somebody 
makes while holding the chair because his rbi is an autonomy body nobody can an interfere it is a mutually i mean of course it will be the, under the control of the government of india under the the control of the constitution it will be obeyed all the rules and the laws of this country right though it is having an autonomy with definitely uh, within the in a constitutional provisions and as rbi governor they could have been uh, more what you call they could have been say the same thing when they are in the position to save if and if it has something has happened negatively for the the country but after moving out of the office and if you make the statements which will definitely will add some political colors to it so anyway so without going into that the question of debate has arisen whatsoever reason end of the day whether rbi is in autonomy or it has diluted it is the autonomy was a matter of concern so what government of india has decided to make more i mean because there is also pressure from the always from the corporate houses on the rbi to uh, on the change of the interest rates either to reduce the interest rates because the cost of capital the interest rates if it is in a high what it means the cost of capital would be high for the corporate why so they always the corporate industry i mean they wanted to have the lower interest rates we have witnessed during the yv reddy tenure and subsequently his successor yv i mean subbarao is also has continued to keep an higher rate of interest okay because of that where we had also the stories that we are less affected by the global financial crisis 2008 many people are appreciated these two governors for their you know commitment and uh, protecting the autonomy of that wherein uh, you know uh, uh, that was the uh, uh, very uh, great uh, you know the vision of those the governors so the point is when this uh, the discussion and has come into the line light so the government of india has constituted something called as a monetary policy committee to where to conduct the monetary policy earlier it is a rbi particularly rbi governor used to have more a control on you know this changing of the interest rates so the rbi thought let's to strengthen it it has constituted with the uh, you know from three members from the academia who are the senior most or experienced person into the field so from the 2016 this committee has constituted and minimum in a yearly four times this committee has to meet and discuss and release the statement on this monetary policy including about your you know the ratios of different ratios are you know your crr slr or your repo rate repo reverse repo rate to the even interest rates all those you know instruments i mean has to be reviewed and uh, release uh, you know the policy uh, stands on that so that was a uh, constituted and recently this first committee has completed where the pamiduva and uh, you know ravindra dolka and other members were part of it and they have completed uh, the recent pass the committee and now the new committee is in the place uh, which is effect from this october 5th 2020 with the new members this professor ashma goel jayantar varma and shashanka bide so the point is Uh, the remaining three again of course two are from the rbi uh, who are the uh, uh, members and rbi governor is an ex officio and majority out of minimum quorum is the four members has to be attended the meeting uh, if any policy has to be passed and one may be thinking that you know this is a very six members and if there is any tie what will happen for any decision because it's a six member in the committee because it's if it is a you know uh, in the numbers or if you uh, know different then we, if it is five probably one can get a majority but in this case the rbi's governor is having a veto power i mean which is end of the day in case of the tie he will get a chance of second vote so wherein the at the time uh, the rbi the governor will uh, uh, take a, a, a call on that and otherwise every member can uh, mark uh, their views and uh, concerns in that chetan gatte was also there which was in a, uh, ended that okay so before this uh, monetary policy committee then how was it is used to be uh, conducted the monetary policy it is there is a technical advisory committee which is to assist the rbi governor you know in terms of you know doing certain research and you know by taking a different and experts but since there is an mpc now it is uh, completely this technical advisory committee is closed for a simple uh, for your understanding look at what are the policy rates Uh, why i am showing you this rates also there is a purpose to it okay so these are the policy rates uh, the repo rate is at 4% reverse repo rate is 3.5 i'll tell you what are those thing also 
but just keep in mind these rates also or this is the latest rates which i just has taken collected even yesterday from the rbi website okay so coming back to the major instruments of rbi so how an rbi can play a role uh, in the uh, you know economy is now is concerned right so the each of these instruments we will discuss like repo rate reverse repo rate all those instruments each one i'll try to explain that what it is uh, you know uh, means before that let me also explain you that rbi have both uh, uh, ways of that uh, you know policies which is like uh, conventional uh, policy con conventional monetary policy and unconventional monetary policy measures right so unconventional monetary policy is also when as on when it is required the rbi will also uh, follow it so let's understand about what are those uh, conventional monetary policy measures this is like about open market operations where central banks also decided to buy or sell any government bonds given a, uh, any point of time if the, whenever the government is buying a bonds because if already suppose they were commercial banks or some banks which has issued uh, this bonds if they are buying means the money supply will be increasing if rbi because they are buying from the public that you know these are the bonds which is available you can give it to us and we pay more rate of interest so that the money supply will go whenever rbi issues the bonds in the open market that means the people will deposit their money with the central bank and they take back these bonds so that the money supply will be reduced in the account okay so that is one way of this open market operation which works so the reserve requirement ratios also about this slr and you know crr the ratios we will also discuss and the discount window where you know central bank act as a, a lender of last resort as i mentioned and commercial banks when it is experiencing this illiquidity okay so that means whenever there is a shortage of funds with the commercial banks where you know rbi can open up and you know uh, try to uh, do with this things okay then coming back to i don't know who is playing this uh, in the screen don't behave like a child school children will do that stop uh, writing on the screen please if still having a feelings of school you can join the school i'll also help you to get some admission somewhere right so the cash reserve ratio is the one of the uh, most important instruments uh, you know this has been there uh, for higher the amount how it will impact on the money supply as i mentioned uh, you, you need to understand one thing is very clear let me again put the rbi end of the day is en entirely the management of the money supply which will have impact on the price general level of prices that is like inflation which in turn will have a positive or negative impact on the growth rate right so it is always to see that how do we manage this and also they need to keep the banks the financial health should be in a good conditions so in that way this cash reserve ratio is another major instruments that means you should know how the bank works every deposit suppose say what is the basic principle of for any bank every bank believes that i mean all the customers whoever has deposited money will not come back and collect immediately right so there can be different needs and requirements because some people will deposit some people will borrow money from them so in that way this cash reserve ratio is one way it is asked central banks all the commercial banks to if you receive 100 1000 rupees if you look at this image 40 rupees you have to keep with the rbi for what for any kind of contingency requirement that means at any point of time if there is a huge demand for withdrawals from the bank certain amount of the liquidity should be with the bank so as a safer side the central bank says that don't money don't give that entire money in form of loans we all know the major one of the source of income bank is the differentials of interest rates right because they give saving rates will be less and you know if somebody wants to borrow the rate of interest would be different 
Okay, so that's uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, one of them. Of course, they have auxiliary incomes like your today, you know, minimum balance if you are not maintaining, they're collecting, of course, in the DD charges. So there are also different sort of, you know, uh, investment opportunities they have banks to earn the income. But one of the major uh, source of income is also the interest rate differentials, which the banks earns. So that means every thousand rupees when they receive as a statutory requirement, as RBI is made mandatory, 4% has to kept. Where in this 4%, you won't receive any sort of interest or any uh, amount of the money on this. So 40 rupees, ideally, you have to keep with the central bank for meeting any sort of contingency requirement. So I'll tell you one example also. Some of you may recollect in the 2008, when the global financial crisis has happened in the USA, Lehman Brothers, ICICI Bank, there was a news or rumor around that the ICICI Bank has invested so much money into the, the Lehman Brothers. And now the ICICI Bank is also going to uh, uh, face the serious uh, problem. So that rumor has put pressure on all the depositors are rushed to the banks and try to withdraw the money. All the ICICI Bank ATMs and banks were running out of the cash. People were only lost their confidence in the bank and they rushed. So uh, ICICI has several times appealed, but people could not resist and should continue to go. And finally, RBI has to come out and say that you don't worry. And you know, ICC Bank financial health is very good. In case of any default, RBI is guaranteeing. So please unnecessarily don't withdraw the money. So the RBI has came to the press and as an assured to the, all the deposit holders, then that pressure has, has slowed down for a period of time. So such kind of contingencies, this kind of money also can be facilitated for uh, to the these commercial banks as a precautionary. Okay, so that means only 960 rupees you will have balance to do any kind of business. So are this only one ratio is available? No, there is also another ratio which is called statutory liquidity ratio. The statutory liquidity ratio is, again, all these commercial banks has to be maintained minimum this 20. As of now, I think it is 18%. This image is prepared little slightly some days back. So even assume that if it is a 20%, that means every thousand rupees, 200 rupees has to be kept as the SLR requirements. So here the banks can earn certain amount of, you know, interest rates. Basically this SLR, all these investments would be on government securities or the gold or the, you know, guilt rigid securities, right? So that means basically, which is assured rate of return their investments. So this would be in a SLR requirements. Okay, so the SLR is the also equal. That means 40 plus this 200, 240 rupees will not have with the commercial banks. So the remaining only 760 rupees they will have. That means this 760, of course here where you get on the sum a fixed rate of interest will be very minimal because it is a guaranteed. So either you may get equal amount of the deposit rates or sometimes even lower than the deposit rates. But it is an assured. You will get certain amount of the return and it will be more liquid from on of an assets, which uh, you know the commercial banks can liquidate in the, during the difficult times with the approval of the RBI. So. Now that means 760 rupees. You will also understand why these commercial banks goes more aggressively to even lending for the big corporate houses. Okay. Because now this out of 1000 rupees, only 670 rupees are available. And the 760 rupees has to earn income for 1000 rupees. So additional, there is a pressure. Apart from this, these two ratios requirements, we have also something called priority sector lending. I don't know how many of you heard about this priority sector lending like an agriculture, education, now even the small and micro medium enterprises also added to that. Agriculture, education, MSME and small, you know, the borrowers. So this all has classified and made mandatory to all commercial banks to, you know, uh, lend the uh, money uh, for them. 
okay so with uh, so that's a reason where you'll see this slr uh, you know i mean this requirements will put a lot of pressure on the uh, uh, banks also because they have to earn more money to feed because the private sector loan also the rate of interest would be very minimum we all know again it will be 60 paisa 70 paisa or you know some cases it will be like even if you see the self help groups it is only 25 paisa wherein which is have a lot of pressure on the commercial banks you know to meet all these requirements also okay this is the what i was been trying to say which is put pressure on them okay so this then how this crr sr slr rates if they reduce then what is the impact on the economy how it is going to save because rbi i'll show you the i think subsequent slides will have what rbi is governor has done uh, during this covid 1 and now what they are doing in covid wave 2 also we will i'll show you so to understand this ratio has reduced okay this reserve ratio has reduced even crr used to be around you know 8 to 10% you know few years back and it has reduced up to 4 and slr requirements also used to be there up to you know 40% now it has come down drastically to 18% so whenever this ratios are reduced what will happen the money supply will increase that the availability of funds with the banks will increase right because say from the 22 if it is 18 that is additional 2 rupees it is available with the bank which they can lend to whoever is required so when the availability of funds are increased people like whoever is required can borrow and meet their requirements so that is what the rbi has facilitated even the wave uh, during the corona wave the first wave also one again when the money supply increases what will happen suppose say msme sector is also as seriously has affected during this time and they have an obligation to make payments for the different suppliers because this entire supply chain system and uh, you know where you will receive something and you have to pay and somewhere you have to receive is also there so the people also might have borrowed loans from the banks so it has facilitated to all particularly some priority sectors to be extended loan facility you know given additional capital for their requirements to meet because of there is a credit crunch or the availability the lack of money supply so rbi facilitated giving an additional loans to these institutions there is also critic many people said that are you are only giving loans but not giving free money you should have extended a support not as a loan form it should be in the grants form or give them at one time grant so that those institutions would be a better there is also an argument but we will look at how fair those arguments and if they do what will happen to the economy one has to look at it the idea of whenever they reduce this requirements there is also pressure that the banks are getting into more riskier assets assets right because most of the money we are pumping uh, to the different sectors and during this pandemic times definitely getting a recovery of those loans also is a challenge right so now but the idea of the government is the people who ever in the pressure can borrow the loan and get out of this crisis it is like if any family is getting into the trouble has a serious pressure from the different you know lenders so at least if the new credit facility is available you borrow and pay a certain amount of them who are pressurizing and get some window and where your business can be recovered over a period of time and you can repay both the loans so the liquidity will be there so the liquidity crunch will not be there so this is what the crr slr cut rbi has taken one way so that the the money supply has uh, you know increased in the economy by in turn when the money supply increased because these firms will spend by hiring the people or buying something so that the the public also will have more money in their hands so that the purchasing power will not go down when the purchasing power will not come down 
then the goods and services when they are intact the demand for the goods and services are intact the people also will not lose their employment at least in some extent okay of course the employment rate is also is alarming situation in the country now the recently cmia also has come up uh, with the you know uh, center for monitoring you know report uh, on indian economy they said it is around 14 to 17 percent the unemployment is uh, increasing uh, but this is inevitable uh, during this covid time this is not just specific to the country like in india across the globe the unemployment rates are uh, going up and it is a, a matter of concern for every one of us so now look at the other uh, you know uh, instruments called the repo rate and the reverse repo rate this also you might have heard all the time that how you know this two terms which is there even the graphically also i have given you can just uh, check it out so this repo rate means which reserve bank provides overnight liquidity to the banks against a collateral of government and other approved securities under the liquidity adjustment facility because there is certainly you know uh, what you call this statutory requirements right crr statutory requirements like crr slr this all the commercial banks has to show overnight a uh, fortnight every fortnight that is every 15 days end of the day in the bank book of bank accounts it has to show that the minimum this ratios as per the legal requirements it has to be shown if they fail to show that minimum reserves in their book of accounts it will be penalized it will be fined those banks a proportion of how much shortfall of funds they have to be paid to fine so certainly some banks also borrows money from either their own peer like a commercial banks for overnight like if you see the money market you might have heard about call money market overnight money market notice money market there are different sort of with the duration of the time you change their name so that is way this repo rate which reserve bank gives loans to the commercial banks which the rate of interest which is fixed you call it as a repo rate okay so the reverse repo rate the reverse repo rate is where rbi borrows money from the commercial banks you try to understand this the repo rate is which is the rbi lending loans to the commercial banks whereas the reverse repo rate the rbi is borrowing money from the commercial banks one would maybe be puzzled who are not aware of with an rbi why would rbi borrow because it is a central bank it is having uh, power of you know printing the currency they cannot print just like that even currency also in that way anyway so it is to absorb the liquidity in the economy what do you mean by the liquidity liquidity is about the money supply in the economy okay so because why do they do that if you see that there is an inflationary situations in the economy rbi will issue the bonds like as i mentioned it is through open market or these things they will issue them certain instruments keeping relatively higher interest rates this commercial banks also feels that instead of lending it to the private players with higher risk they will try to buy from the rbi those bonds and entire their funds will be deposited with an rbi so that the availability of funds will be less so whenever this reverse repo rate is in high so the banks will attract keep an higher interest rates so that uh, they will get uh, you know uh, relatively uh, more uh, deposits okay so this is about the Uh, you know the reverse uh, repo rate so this picture also you could uh, you know uh, try to you know i don't know whether this screen is covering with this yeah so whenever there is a recession times okay uh, economy in the recession times what they do they try to pump more money okay and just a minute i'm sorry so that 
because the central banks as i mentioned they buy government securities from the banks and give them cash so that the banks also at a lower interest like if you look at now uh, the banks are going high, lower interest rates i think uh, at that 7.75 percent also where you can get the bank loans now uh, because of the more availability of funds they have reduced if you look at before corona the interest rates were went up to 11% 12% for various requirements but now it is the lowest ever in the interest rates is concerned so because now they wanted to pump the money into the hands of the public in different forms so that uh, the demand can be kept intact right so this is a similar uh, this can be done and during the higher inflation times that you know the securities the bank will give securities to the rbi will give sell it to them and take the money with them so that the higher interest rates will be there so borrower will not borrow because the higher interest rates and many people will deposit the same money instead of spending because if interest rates is very good then the people so that is what uh, you know it uh, happens with that repo rate and the uh, reverse repo rate and during the recession and the inflationary situations and you know this is our uh, open market operations where we have just discussed where the government openly buys and sells uh, these securities uh, you know where uh, you know banks can borrow and uh, depends on this requirements will be uh, changed these are all the the major uh, what you call uh, your uh, you know uh, instruments which rbi uses often to adjust and support the industry in different forms these are the conventional monetary policy methods then what are the unconventional monetary policy methods are there okay if you look at this would be very rarely when there is an abnormal situations where people would be following any bank it's not the people it's the bank which would follow it so these three policies one is the forward guidance credit easing and quantitative easing then what is this forward guidance so this monetary policy will affects the long term interest rates because of the expectation theory this expectation theory is nothing but what would be the future you know the demand and how it goes so accordingly you know it is try to forecast and fix the lower interest rates if it is required for the economy okay because generally the interest rates also will be based on the our proper inflation methods i don't know how many people know how inflationary situations are uh, calculated uh, how do we uh, uh, get that inflation figures in conventionally as of now uh, you know around 2 lakh 60000 sample house uh, you know uh, from retail shops where we get the data uh, and accordingly the inflation will be uh, calculated by giving weightage to the food items non food items and so on and so forth and recently even rbi has adopted this high frequency data uh, which you call even big data also in a supplementary uh, uh, still it is in the an experimental method to calculate for indian is concerned uh, uh, for that what is that high, high frequency data because as we know today many of we are switched to the e-commerce platforms even prior to covid also there were a lot of transactions were happening where you will get true price of each product buy sell price it is recorded and millions of transactions are happening over a period every in every day whereas in the earlier method which is only in the very few lakhs we used to get but now we have more number of observations to get an accurate figure of this you know inflation and accordingly this interest rates also will be adjusted the other is the credit easing policy that is also is adopted in 2008 where the government purchasing private sector assets for example corporate bonds residential mortgage bond securities because this is generally rbi only buys the government bonds and securities one may ask why only the government bonds what is the logic why people are even crazy for this government uh, things so the government is nothing but about any promise which the government of india will do see political parties are different and government of india is different any political party may come into the power and form the government and uh, you know rule the state or the country but the government of india makes certain promises it cannot go back 
because it is the question of our sovereignty integrity right so generally 99% or even i can say 100% the government of india if any policy is announced will not go back because that will affect the sovereignty of the nation so if the government is assured by default it will not go default that is the reason many people look at for the government jobs look at government bonds or securities or even government banks the people wanted to deposit also because there is a assurance and government will not default because of this sovereignty and integrity of the nation right so but in the during some uh, you know situations at difficult times even the governments can go for this credit easing where even corporate bonds and issues also can bought so that the money supply uh, because now industries also are experiencing the difficult times particularly like say covid time so as an exceptional cases even governments may uh, you know buy even this things this is a very unconventional policies and very rarely used and there is also another is a quantitative easing which is also similar to our open market operations but instead of buying and selling these short term bonds the government buys and sells this long term bonds instead of short term will go for a long term so this is what it has come from this ltros long term repo rate operations also has come up because this repo rate and all which is will be very short term requirement and this ltros are uh, meant for minimum 3 years time the longer duration so that they have a very uh, good window uh, time for you know uh, for the you know the people i mean the companies or industry to uh, pay back to the uh, uh, these things right so this is also one of the new uh, ltros also is a new concept which was uh, uh, the present uh, rbi governor has taken initiative uh, during this uh, difficult times i think yeah so this is what uh, you would see this okay this is the ltros or the tool under which the central bank provides one year to three years money banks to the prevailing repo rate which is accepting this right so because the short term which as i mentioned there can be an issues that's the reason this ltros has uh, was you know given uh, uh, very important and the liquidity adjustment facility and the you know, marginal standing facility uh, these are also two uh, policies which is to meet the requirement of uh, you know statutory uh, uh, ratios uh, they have also given these policies which rbi helps them it's not only just they borrow from commercial banks to this they can also rbi itself also will facilitate extend the support to uh you know this uh, uh you know the policies okay so uh, as i mentioned why this ltr so important uh, which is also as i discussed so and what has done uh, from the rbi uh, in the recent past covid 19 i um, this is the first wave uh Uh, you know uh, things what uh, they have done uh, if you look at this uh, fixed rate of reverse repo rate has reduced from uh, 90 bps to 4% that means it has reduced uh, these things so that the banks may use get an additional funds for lending various sector so even this long term repos which is introduced for 3 year tenure and this will impact on the debt market particularly capital markets and the crr rate was also cut uh, and this will inject new liquidity almost 1.3 trillion will be relaxed in the banking system and also in the first instance this moratorium and the loans for 3 months i think is extended to another 3 months uh, 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 so that the people get a relaxation and of course there is also debate on that because the banks were started charging the penalty on that interest on interest for the 6 months and also and so forth but i think uh, with the intervention of the supreme court and i think rbi also has relaxed given some relaxation to those people the uh, afterwards but of course this was also given at least though they might have paid the additional uh, you know, these things but the relaxation during that times was given in the covid wave one time so suddenly the deferment of interest on working capital facilities for 3 months so this is also reduced the pressure on corporates and uh, so that it will not uh, downgrade their uh, rating agencies right so the basically if you look at all this uh, policies i will I, i will try to tell you the what is the notion of the common public 
many people said that rbi is only giving loans and this is our money and again we have to pay why should they give instead why can't they give free money please one need to understand the governments and the money whatever it is it is our money nobody denies it and the governments also try to only manage and facilitate this entire process if you give them without having any adequate production without producing goods and services then you will not come out from this crisis i'll give you a very simple example to understand this how this rbi this rate cuts would impact on positively just take a case of any of our individual cases if i as a family if i am going through very difficult times because of some reason if i borrowed heavily but now i don't have any job to pay that my debts if i given a free amount of the money will i work more hard to meet those requirements once i got in a grant farm okay if i let it pay and you will relax but the money supply will be there how did this money supply will be printed in the economy based on the goods and services which we produce right the equal amount of the money supply will be printed okay of course we may keep some gold reserves as a backup all that but end of the day this money supply whatever in the economy it is in the circulation that should be equivalent of goods and services then only the inflation will be in a moderate otherwise our inflation will shoot up even during the 2008 crisis if you countries like zimbabwe had experienced 300% inflation just imagine 200 to 300% of inflation that means the people used to carry in the bags the cash but comes the goods and services in their hands which would be highly inflationary situation so instead if they give you a loan so it has given you an additional capital where you invest do some kind of an activity and we work more and get a you know some additional time then you try to play them in a phase manner so that the adequate capital requirements will be there of course when the situation were worse of course it is need to give them lump sum amounts uh, that is called even el capital money we will come back to that but as of now rbi what was through this so called again atmanirbhar and package also many people felt that you know nothing has given into my pocket the government has said 20 lakhs crore project this much money and that but i have not received a single rupee unfortunately if you observe slowly the governments or the political parties are in the name of direct benefit or in the in the name of direct you know benefits they are destabilizing the economy the reason is again maybe possibly the public only because we don't recognize acknowledge the indirect benefits because of the government policy it's maybe due to lack of our awareness due to lack of our willingness to accept it because we wanted easy way of money many of us i won't generalize everybody but the trend if you look at that is become inevitable if i would be paid 10000 rupees from the government ah that particular government is very good the freebies we have been habituated to get free things from the the government then only recognize the that the government do is doing something for the the society otherwise you will say that no now look at the inflation rate even during this time it is around 6 to 7% of course certain goods are in as experiencing higher rates of prices for various reasons like cooking oil to your uh, uh, you know the crude oil i mean the petrol and diesel prices gas prices again lpg prices are still it is a moderate comparatively if you look at the historical prices one can check out still it is in 2013 12 that time also the more or less the same prices were there okay but now is also experienced despite 4 to 6 you know 6 to 7 years time more or less the same prices so the idea of rbi is also very clear that it is giving scope for all enthusiastic entrepreneurs or individuals to borrow required capital spend more productively and regain your old glory 
that is the principle which rbi has maintained i think several sectors has shown a positive trend okay compared to many of the global economies india still is a better of course there are limitation which we'll talk about it little later but rbi is concern also as a central bank what i would look at forget about government what it has done whether it is has done sufficiently or not but at least i think rbi is concern has done within the scope and the limits what it needs to be done even in the first wave which has also resulted in some way positively to the various sectors uh, to get at least in a short term uh, relief by keeping the interest rates lower inflation rates also moderate hence the people are even able to offer certainly the more or less more goods and services okay so that's uh, i think one has to be uh, recognize the contribution of rbi during this uh, you know the pandemic times if you look at the recent rbi report i mean the uh, rbi has in the press notes uh, these are the data which has captured and has released in the press through which i'm trying to put forward during this second wave uh, you know remarks which they have given consumption demand is holding up with the sales of consumer goods rising in the double digit in january march 2021 this is based on may 5th rbi press release just one day today here and there in 2015 21 may this report has come from there this is has sourced this information and average daily electricity generation up 40% on year on year if you see because of many people are at Uh, sitting at uh, homes now for this covid there is a work from home culture so that it has increased probably for various reasons this uh, uh, you know the electricity consumption and i think it's meeting the demand is concern and see the rail freight has registered a growth of 76% year on year in the april but only the toll collections the roads because of this mobility i think it has declined but quite unlike that uh, abrupt uh, mobility uh, during the last year but the registration of automobiles in april 2021 has shown moderation compared to the march but the tractor segment continues to its a best these are the rbi estimates how this indian economy because many news or propaganda saying that the economy is in this uh, toll ram these that so please try to understand in a positive aspects without uh, undermining the challenges uh, difficulties which the common public is facing i am showing the other side of it foreign exchange reserves are also has shooted up 5.588 billion dollars in april i think in the present it has touched highest ever in the history uh, of indian economy that you know uh, it we have the reserves one may be thinking what is the use of these having higher foreign exchange reserves in what way because rbi is earning and continue to maintain this and what is an advantage which they get it so that in the global economy you can acquire or get required things as on when you know required so i'll try to be very brief uh, certain measures in the the recent past in the second wave where rbi has uh, also has taken that again this uh, term liquidity facility uh, you know 50000 crores are to easy access to emergency health services okay so that means it has facilitated the uh, you know additional credit uh, facility and also this long term repo operations for the small finance banks it has increased to various sectors basically it is making available so the end of the day if you observe all these measures again uh, which is Uh, even in the second wave time rbi is trying to do is uh, increasing the, the the credit facility for the uh, every people even for the msme sector as well okay please don't mind i am having little stress on my stomach anyway so this overdraft facility for the state governments also has uh you know uh increased uh, so that there will be an additional 
uh, borrowings uh, can be increased so that they will have a better physical position because it has increased uh, more number of days so the end of the day even the second wave also uh, uh, what rbi is uh, trying to do is to making available the credit requirements for the various sectors of the economy okay so but there is of course there is a challenging uh, uh, you know many of this msme sector is demanded to uh, get the payments from the government in time rather than this credit facility is fine but uh, they are due many payments because they supply certain goods and services to the governments on various projects but the payments are due for quite long time and they do expect uh, that uh, can be uh, paid them okay Uh, so this quantitative easing i think i have already uh, discussed where uh, you know uh, people create and more funds so there is a, this was one of the important concept you might have uh, seen uh, during the first wave and also in the second wave that is the helicopter money particularly in the state of telangana and kerala i think even few other states were demanded for this uh, helicopter money so what is this helicopter money all about it as we have been used any time in the country or even across the globe why it is called as an helicopter money because we said rbi has done already enough uh, by reducing various policy rates and made available uh, you know to them but then why there is a demand of this helicopter money so this helicopter money is nothing but a one time grants to the public this can be done by the governments or even the banks through the banks also they can facilitate this process okay but this is precisely this is the instrument of the government so this helicopter money method has adopted during this 2008 financial crisis in the us what they have done is around if i remember around 700 dollars money has been distributed at free of cost to the students and youth of and unemployed youth or the low income groups across the country the simple reason is because there was lack of demand in the market for their goods and services hence you know it was adopted this helicopter money okay so basically this money nothing but you give them as a grant it is like you give them and you don't ask again like say in the state of telangana raitu bandhu where the government pays and again you don't need to repay back them right so that will help them to meet that so in a similarly the many people demanded during this covid time particularly unorganized sector the low income groups people are seriously affected about their employment and their livelihood hence it would be good if the government of india or the concerned state governments would extend this some amount of the lump sum amount to the public so that they will be less vulnerable okay so that's the reason uh, where many people are done but the point is then why even the second wave also now the state governments already started few of the states or the policy makers certain people are demanding at least now the government of india should uh, take up this idea of helicopter money to uh, give because this will have a multiplier effect for uh, non economic students benefit i'll tell you what is this multiplier effect multiplier effect means nothing but see if you give this kind of money to the common public what they do they generally consume all the goods and services rather than saving those monies because their income levels are very less and whatever they receive as these grants they spend on various goods and services that will create a demand for goods and services when the uh, there is a demand for goods and services the employment will increase when employment is increases the growth rates also will be better because everybody will have a better income so uh, because if you give this money to higher income group people they may not spend entire money or they may spend very partial amount of that money on that because their needs and needs are might be cut so that's the reason there is a demand 
but the governments are very cautious and even the recent rbi in the report also they have mentioned that rbi is taking stock of situation in the country on a regular basis all the macro economic indicators and accordingly they are extending the all possible uh, you know uh, the supports uh, they will also in the future also they will uh, do that uh, but right now its concern is that this may fuel the inflation already we are experiencing slightly the increasing inflation due to this various money supply has increased to the banks and you know various uh, methods and if additionally if you pump this money the the inflation rates goes up but you may pay them just a 5000 to maximum 10000 rupees for in each household but if the inflation situation is goes up then the all the money it it goes away for in the account of inflation and the real wage or the real income will not increase right one has to look at the inflation if it is moderate that itself is a, a good source of income for the common public because when the inflation rates are moderate then your real income will not fall though your monetary income will fall the real income is nothing but the amount of the money limit your goods and services if you are able to buy with your limited money all the goods and services which is required for your survival then still that is a better an option otherwise you increase the abnormal you know the prices and you just pay them 5 to 10000 saying that we have given money but then inflation has an increase in a great extent then i think that will not give you any a fruitful the results that's the reason i think you know government of india has not been done but this would be mostly on the fiscal policy front side rather than the monetary policy aspect uh, in the discussion i just brought this uh, topic because i have been seeing the you know sort of news on this helicopter money also in the recent past and rbi also may support in a by way of giving loans to the government also you might have heard also this news uh, when shaktikanta das particularly who is the present rbi governor has taken a charge uh, you know there was a news you i don't know many of you heard that rbi governor has has lent so much money to the government crores of money was given as a form of loan that was the highest ever rbi has lent to the government okay then they said yeah this is the reason they have changed from urjit patel to you know shaktikanta das and you know there is lighter way many people said he is not a easy historian not an economist and this and that but one has to acknowledge political critics apart but i think rbi is has got and improved its the quality and autonomy much greater than ever in the past because the giving loans to government is not a new phenomenon shaktikanta das has not introduced it is part and parcel of rbi policy it is there from the beginning so the government is continue to borrow as and when required and the the bank one of the function also as required the banks also will support in the form of loan only right it is supplements to the government the policies okay so what i am trying to conclude that rbi one the uh, the, the summary of my things that rbi autonomy has increased as general perception it is reduced but my observations when i looked at all this policy like say your mpc is in the place now monetary policy committee where they regularly meet and discuss and have coming up with more from at least from 2016 onwards continuously so it has strengthened rbi and autonomy and it is as institution and also rbi to address this covid challenges has also coming up and reviewing on a regular basis and been extending doing a very uh, you know uh, wonderful job in terms of facilitating the uh, you know the process uh, but maybe there still may be a left from the government to do certain uh, measures as a fiscal policy rather than the monetary policy monetary policy side i think the government has done the best policy because it has made available to the loans to the public kind the interest rates are very less and you know the, there is a flexibility in at least in the first wave that uh, of you know uh, the loans waves and rescheduled the loans for the msme and even the government is assured, I mean, the banks are assured the government has given the guarantee they said to the banks whenever they have this kind of fear that they may be getting into the risky assets government also said that 
government will be guarantee for such kind of loans we don't worry extend the loans and try to save so i think uh, we are going uh, as rbi as, as as a policy it is going in a very right direction uh, but still one may be thinking that then why there is so much problem in the economy if there is a very good right policy in monetary policy then why should be there is serious uh, problem of unemployment and serious problem of you know the employment issues and the incomes has fall down and the poorer section of the society are getting more vulnerable so the the reasons would be that a physical policy front it requires to do little more than what has been done number 2 one is as i said this fiscal policy front the government has to take up little more steps like you know pump additional funds to the mahatma gandhi nare nreg scheme of course you know there is also a lot of critics to the narega scheme that it is don't provide any skills and all that is a separate game a discussion and debate but at this uh, uh, difficult times i think it's good to uh, you know uh, think of and look for uh, you know uh, what has been uh, uh, you know uh, done so in that way i think it has done but needless to say that you know as i mentioned in the beginning this is once in generation this kind of kind of difficulties and challenges will come as a role of the government whatever you do you will be vulnerable you will be vulnerable one has to remember this as a government or as a rbi whether it is a state or central they are only try to minimize this losses by using all means as a citizens we have to look at whether the government using all means methods to address the needs of the common public or not if it is using all the instruments and it still we are facing the challenges and issues it has to be faced because this is the once in generation this kind of difficulties will come it's not only in india across the globe every economy is facing this difficulty because of that reason you may not able to uh, you know get proper things like say for example the vaccination also of course we have to book but which country is having a surplus tell me vaccination every country wants to vaccinate their own citizens and everybody wants to sell and they are also extending partially to the other nations the way we are receiving from russia and other countries also vaccine we are receiving and we are also as sent to the some other countries right so it is as a global cooperation and support each of the countries are supporting in different forms either form of supplying na yeah i think my it was went off my thing i hope i'm audible now right so the idea is i think i am uh, coming to the conclusion so that the government is uh, really uh, uh, putting an efforts of course it is required some more like as i mentioned i mean they are doing the challenge is we will not be able to recover because of this global situations like you know as simple as if any family is going through a financial crisis will you think that no family member will be affected by that crisis being head of the family if you are your in the loss you are all dependents also will have an effect despite you may borrow the money and try to you know meet that but some way another way our expenses will be reduced and our needs has to be cut short we will be vulnerable right so as a country is also no more different than that on the difficult times that's what i am saying it is not about the uh, the gov state or the central which we all need to understand and the difficult times everyone has to play a role i always believe on this kind of massive loss it is not just the government ngos and the high income people who are like you know reliance or ambani or uh, all this uh, high income group people also has to extend and all the people whoever at their capacity if you are try to extend our uh, you know uh, support to our own neighboring society then possibly we will come out from this crisis rather than depending on a single source and asking us to resolve this all issues will be uh, you know unjustifiable uh, demands so i think 
uh, that's a uh, uh, where but as of end of end of the day one line the monetary policy is concerned rbi is doing according to me by various reforms doing an excellent and it is more an uh, appreciate okay so uh, uh, thank you and uh, i would be happy to take questions and we can have any discussion one can agree with me and disagree you can feel free uh, uh, with me any sort of uh, questions uh, i would be happy to share my views thank you sir thank you for enlightening me just uh, three questions are have the same here so lakshmi lakshmi nambiyar is asking how does the use of any capital money affect the economy during covid 19 pandemic sir was oh, a little more loud how does the use of helicopter money affect the economy during covid 19 pandemic yeah yeah i think i have done i have touched up on that point this helicopter money is basically as i mentioned it is one time grant you know the we are giving free cash so that may put pressure on the inflation uh, you know uh, because you would get easily you will buy goods and services and uh, you know the people uh, more many people will demand goods and services and in the market you may not find goods and services because now of because of the lockdown there is a lot of restrictions on the production process supply chain is already disrupted and if the demand is increases suddenly then there is also challenge of you know increasing the inflation that is the reason the governments are going very cautiously on that aspect but definitely see in the first wave also uh, uh, covid uh, the at least in andhra telangana the state governments also supported central government has given 500 rupees for each jandan account holder particularly women account holders as 500 rupees and telangana government has given 1500 rupees and the andhra government has paid 1000 rupees in support of the central government so it has supported some amount of the money to them but in the second wave yet to come and we hope at this point of time i believe that it is necessary now at least some amount of the money to be supported all these bpl card holders or the you know the migrant workers or the daily wage earners who lost the employment because of a series of this some amount of the money definitely would be beneficial and i think we should expect the government would come up with that because last time uh, you know for this uh, street vendors the government of india has come up with the you know uh, pm samvan nidhi with the you know 10000 rupees as uh, again in the form of loan but uh, it is time for i think in the second wave because many uh, serious disruptions are happened uh, of course there are different ways it has come like you know recently the government of india said the pe people who lost the both the parents the government of india said they extend some financial support and also uh, provide educational loans and support for their entire you know the career so certain measures are coming up and in the future we should expect or else we have to also demand uh, to provide the support to the you know uh, the poorest of the poor some support during this pandemic uh, wave to also yeah uh, any other questions uh, there is also i think the govind has uh, asked here that i have a doubt on policies that are made for poor people government came up with the scheme of food shelter money work with a, a caste discrimination a government government job too and for rich people government came with schemes like production incentive scheme and various schemes and a reduction of tax that increase the wealth of rich well right you know this is also very important let me try to touch upon this i think see everybody needs to understand you know the the form of the rich class the wealthy people i don't know you might have following or not today many of the rich class are leaving the country there is a report from axiomy report also said around 5 to 6% of i individual networks are leaving this country okay many of the i individual investors who are there they are leaving the country for various reasons like you know of this so much tax things there is also super rich tax demand was there they have been already paying lot of taxes under the csr also they are doing certain services i am not supporting the corporate sector but i am trying to make you to understand what is their contribution also we need to acknowledge the way we are acknowledging the exploitation i do agree they exploit but they didn't need to acknowledge also today you and me were sitting at our homes interacting sharing learning unlearning certain things because of what 
the corporate world today let's let's look at the geo as given as a facility to understand and connect across the world on our fingertips and we are questioning the government we are questioning everyone where we have seen i don't know how many of you witnessed we used to get incoming also we used to pay for the telephone per minute 8 rupees 10 rupees and where we are today don't you acknowledge the progress and contribution and we are enjoying the enjoying the benefits for example your air travel helicopter in the past you never can't imagine that was only the rich class travel journey now middle class are able to afford i won't say poor class is able to afford but i can at least say the middle class is able to afford even air travel today the prices has come down drastically we don't you see the contribution the medical facilities also in a great extent r&d has been done today we are saying give us free vaccine let's not do this and that but r&d how much challenges we required the research and development will not happen just in a overnight right so i think you know they have been doing various you know services which we are also enjoying but of course maybe their proportionate their properties are increased but we are worried about unfortunately indian capitalist but we are not worried about the foreign capitalists if any foreign company comes and exploit the country we don't even make any comment if any foreign company comes and does takes crores of money from india it has been happening since independence many foreign companies are established their outlets in this country and taken the wealth of this nation for their countries but when today ambani adani mukesh whoever you know few names it is become like a passion slogan are yaar their wealth has increased 400 times 500 times this government is only giving them you please i think everyone has needs to understand it is the capitalist society whether it is an indian capitalist or the international capitalist of course they are making an abnormal profits which nobody denies to it where this has to be wealth has to be redistributed but at the same time the contribution in the form of the taxes they are doing as well as the services we are enjoying variety of goods and services today we are able to import easily from usa with a low cost and we are using this just check yourself we may having every one of using different country products from germany japan uk every one of in some way another way we are using many foreign products is more an affordable price that is the bit, you know uh, the globalization has given of course it has the challenges like a virus like this corona has also has given in threat for us it is a china virus which has giving a threat we are all disrupted because of that pros and cons are there but we need to acknowledge and understand this both sides of it and industry if it is in the place the employment will be intact not only look at the direct employment indirect employment is also there is lot of like suppose say if your it sector say for instance i'll take an hyderabad many people get benefited by this it companies around from the you know tea seller to hotels restaurants to the cabs to autos to many people uh, you know many shops get the business so it has so much impact on the economy it is adds to the society and we are in the face of in that right that's what even the western countries are experienced to slowly the phase has been there in india also we are trying to move on in the same way okay so that's the reason Sir, uh, yeah i want to speak five minutes about something what i have seen till now about poor people middle class people and rich people yeah please uh, yeah so i have seen two people like a labor on minimum 700 800 per day so it will be like more than 20000 per month and they are getting benefits such as government giving free ration government giving free house government giving many benefits are given to them even government job is given to them depends on caste and I, as i said for rich people caste discrimination uh, sorry well, for this i got like your idea protection. Yes, no, sir, I got... and everything. No, and no, for I, middle I... class people, 
because of cars they can't get job government job they are doing no, no. like no, no, let, let's not get into that discussion sir govin sir see the idea is the caste based all together a debate a discussion is different because it has own challenges pros and cons because see, the caste reservations has come because of there is exploitation not only economic exploitation social exploitation there are yeah. say, whether we accept it no let me finish i understand your point but we will not get into the details of that there is a social exploitation social equality was a concern it's not about the monetary inequality till date you know i am sure even the economically who are rich in the socially i mean so called again the backward people are not given respect as the higher you know the caste so called again upper class or higher caste all that so these are the games are the different uh, you know the uh, i think we should not get into our focus of discussion also something is different on the government policies as that's why the production incentive schemes i said yes it has to be given to motivate to inclusive of everybody government has adopted that strategy which is having own pros and cons there can be a separate discussion on whether the reservations can be given in that way or not and how do we overcome so i think that set of discussion is uh, certainly a different yeah. i was just having one point that uh, uh, the poor can earn properly and the rich can earn properly but a middle class people with job is earning 15000 and has to spend uh, more, many much on education expenses on house emi loans and many things like the more sufferer is middle man can poor and rich in this sense i agree completely sir that is always the you know you are the you know transition period the middle income group is always a transition either you fall under the category of poor or the rich and you will be sufferer that is inevitable i think everybody understood but it is a very a difficult you know uh, challenge uh, that is the way you know that is a loan moratorium or you know certainly you are making available credit facility and you are allowing to borrow some loans whereas they won't get this poor will not get this loans they only get this free ration or free household something uh, but you know they won't get some other incentives also but everybody is having a challenge i do agree the more vulnerable group is the middle income because they are in the trap of you know uh, uh, they will not fall under their any category to benefit but yeah uh, you know uh, i i don't know i don't think uh, any policy maker also will have any solution to it and uh, uh, to that, that there are solution like uh, rbi at present have 50000 crores of surplus uh, and our population is like 130 crores so even if we distribute one crore it will be 130 crores but no need to do so but they can have uh, they can set up business they can set up, uh, make house for the people they can do many well, things it will in no no see that's what i'm saying the 50000 crores for you and me it is a big but as a government for government of india it uh, also is a small amount and when it distributes i think the state governments already you know they are doing house for all the various schemes every state government is trying to build given their incomes as need uh, i think uh, of course there is a lags in the policy but definitely uh, you know that's a matter of concern when people will take but yeah let me move on to the next question where there is dr c b pavitra was asking what do you think of interest rates uh, the decreasing interest rates is the best saving idea no it is not for the saving uh, you know when the interest rates are decreasing it is to spend more because this is a difficult times where many people does not have enough money so the governments want to encourage to spend you not to save you so the saving will come when there is inflationary situations or when we have more income but now the situation is the people has to demand more goods and services so that their living standard or the live, uh, life will not be affected as well as the industries also the demand will be intact so the both will be bit benefited by keeping the demand intact because common public when they are consuming their health and you know they can be intact they can take a good life and the industries also will go so that is the reason interest rates are reduced but not to encourage and this will not be uh, goes for the long term long term of course we need savings so that investments will takes place and that will have but given this situation is only is uh, 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 you know uh, good so another question i think uh, permalu swami is asking is advice to pump money in the hands of public through mahatma gandhi rural work scheme but without generating goods providing such jobs will increase the inflation gain and produced goods yeah that's what i said sir see uh, that's what uh, pumping money through narega is only for the short term i am also personally against without improving the skill set 
the scheme has been doing for quite number of years it has to be train them empower them and you know once they get a placement then remove them from that scheme so the phase it can go but unfortunately the government of india since the independence if you see there is no scheme is in that way even so many power television schemes are there if you look at course of money was allocated so many unemployment schemes are there course of money allocated if somebody is interested you just check it out from independence to now how many course has been allocated for elevation of poverty and unemployment but in what level of uh, you know we are successful in eliminating it that then where is there is a gap because these are all partially you know because we being a political economy so many people wanted to show that politically yeah we have done this that but nobody is making in a serious effort to you know strengthen them and screen out from this years together you know like you know earlier also in the telangana government or even andhra pradesh or even when the united andhra pradesh if i remember in the assembly uh, was mentioned this indramma houses we call in telugu states there was a indramma houses for the poor of the section of the society it has given more than a number of households in the state the scheme has allotted the houses more than total number of households including poor rich it has exceeded the sanctions and still in india i mean still in the same state both the telugu states there are many people who are in the homeless then where are their homes where it went so there is a policy lacuna is there there is also from the both policy front as well as the public front that you know those things are not there it has to be uh, done but what point is this 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 difficult situation types only this is an alternative to pump the money because see in the usa in 2008 crisis time they have given without any work they have given free of money so now itself also the concerned villages can develop now i think in the state of telangana at least i am aware of that they are digging the you know uh, this tanks in the village you know tanks and building up some you know check dams so, and the laying down some roads some sort of you know small developments small small community development works are taking place through this narega that is also very good and there is also a lot of demand that they should be linked to the agriculture sector so that the farmers will be supported so all those demands are there hopefully in the future there can be done but this is covid time i said we can provide additional funds and give them so that uh, they will be benefited that's the only uh, idea uh, uh, my uh, by saying that uh, this one this last question one of the last question sir posted in the youtube actually uh, by by rashi mathur could you please explain how india's monetary policy reforms in the pandemic have an impact on the implementation of the basel 3 norms well see the basel norms i think you know still we are i think in compliance with the basel 3 norms so india is still uh, going at uh, i think it is actually if i remember vaguely i don't uh, i think even 1% more than you know the reserves which has advised by the basel norms india is intact with that the basel norms we are strictly following so but in the covid of course these certain reserves and has uh, relaxed that's what i said this has to be seen as only a, a temporary phenomena when situation improves rbi definitely will i'm sure will improve these again the crr slr rates will be increased to maintain the uh, health of the banks because this may result into the nps also there is a lot of apprehension because rbi is going more aggressive uh, in terms of extending the loans even for the sick units which are having already nps but it has Uh, lend money uh, to the same firms from the medium to the large firms so that is uh, putting a pressure uh, on the indian banking financial stability and that also may go against of the base alarms but i'm sure that can be taken as a temporary uh, uh, phenomenon but i think rbi is well and within the limits of the base alarms to be followed and it has kept uh, even much higher than the base alarm standards so in that way i think our banking system we can say still a uh, little safer because the bankruptcy code is in place uh, banking insolvency code as the government of india has brought up so we are able to recover like say the uh, fair same simple example like you know malia now is ready to pay the entire amount i don't know how many of you heard because we always in the social media there will be a, you know scams that you know under this people has taken loan left the country and looted the money yes that is true but even this after this uh, you know 
um, the government has brought up this bankruptcy court and insolvency court bills they made very clearly that you know they have they've attached their properties and malia is begging now allow me to con- come india and will pay entire loan with interest but we said i think government of india said it is goes as per the law will not violate because you are paying now is not will be facilitated i think the case is still progressing and nirav modi case also similarly it has already attached our enforcement department is attached so they are trying to recover the npas the recoveries are going very positively hope in coming days our npas will further will decline and willful defaulters particularly the willful defaulters will be punished and uh, recover all these bad loans and which will strengthen the banking sector that's only hope as on today thank you so much sir uh, thank you so much for uh, enlightening us and attending the session over to fatima yeah i think there is also question about the disinvestment of public please, sector please, enterprises please, please, uh, please. the disin- disinvestment of public sector well i, I would say very briefly i i mean my in favor of uh, ppp mode that is public and private partnership uh, because this last making farms particularly is become burden on the exchequer uh, many of the last making farms again one may ask why did they uh, went on to the last making how it is happened we have to see that in the last several decades the government of india has we can say somewhere it has failed to strengthen them because it has defaulted on several grounds and they are been incurring huge losses and the exchequer is paying huge money for this loss so that is the reason they are going uh, aggressively on the uh, privatization but there is also cases of where the profit making firms like lic right and the other firms bail and other firms also which are in a very good profit but still the governments are going to privatize so that is what is the people so my view country like in india going an aggressive on privatization will not yield good results in the long run hence uh, you know mostly which is already in the loss making if already all efforts are made and they are in the deep trouble where they can go in the public private partnership and try to strengthen at least in the key areas then that will yield us a better results for the a country like in india but going an aggressive of privatizing all the public sector units i think is a, a matter of concern though government is saying that we make profit and you know because they are in become burden that is uh, rightly but uh, i think uh, india is concern i think we uh, i in view in that uh, we can go at maximum on the ppp mode rather than going uh, more on privatization mode and particularly the institutions which are making a profit and in the good management should not be also privatized but only another concern which is partly we can agree the government is always saying this the business is not the business of the government because the government is only has to be facilitated and monitored why should we intervene in the the business that's the reason they said in the election manifesto also that this particular government is the for the maximum governance and minimum government and but the public has given them mandated so we may feel that public also are in the view of that because the government clear manifesto uh you know the motive is that the maximum governance minimum governance they have been saying in the poll and it has been accepted and public has given mandated i think that's the reason the governments are going and it doesn't mean even if it is a privatized but that should be a strict compliance uh if the regulatory mechanism and works in proper and it is ensures that uh it meets all the you know uh things then we'll have a confidence but only thing is that many of the private sectors are Um, not in line with the governments particularly in the covid times we are seeing many private hospitals how they are exploiting the common public so in a way the, there is a fear among the common public that uh, you know uh, this uh, would lead to a further uh, problem okay so that's my view on this uh, psus is concerned thank you thank you sir uh, participants are requested to fill the feedback form which is posted in the chat box of zoom as well as we get the links okay over to participants अन्यूटिंग 
Fatima, ma'am. I think Madam is having some technical issues. Thank you, Fatima, ma'am. Take no, I'm I'm inviting. Uh, I now request Mr. Navin Kumar, Associate Professor of Commerce and IQSC Coordinator, to propose the vote of thanks. Navin Kumar, sir, over to you. I take privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion. We are very thankful to you, uh, the guest of the day. Dr. Krishna Reddy Chittedi, Assistant Professor, School of Economics, University of Hyderabad, for allocating his valuable time to share the screen with us for conducting today's webinar and also enlightening the, uh, us on the impact of monetary policy during the pandemic situation in India. Yeah. Sir, your presentation was, was truly enriching and very informative. You made uh, our day. Thank you, sir. We are, thank you. we are thankful to our management and the director general for giving the permission and continuous support in organizing. Yeah. We are thankful to our yeah. Dr. B. Mohan Kumar, sir, for being good for the motivation for all of us. I am also thankful to our wife. We are grateful to our principal, Dr. B. Mohan Kumar, sir, for being uh, and cooperating for every step of the webinar. I also thankful to Vice Principal, Ms. K. Anupama, madam, for supporting and cooperating the webinar, uh, webinar of the today's session. I also thankful to the webinar convener, uh, Sri Ram Daida, for wonderful efforts for making this webinar uh, happen to us. I also thankful to webinar convener, uh, webinar coordinator, uh, Miss Fatima Madam, for successful conducting of the webinar. Last but not the least, uh, thanks to each and every participants, faculty, students uh, for attending the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for giving sir, me opportunity. You, Particularly, thank you, Sriram, uh, for giving me an opportunity. And also, Principal Mohan, sir, and uh, Anupama, madam, Atma, madam, and Navin, sir, all. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be associated with Madhruka. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Basha, sir, for the kind technical support. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Basha sir. Basha, unmute Basha, unmute Basha. Close the 